So after putting it off for two weeks, I finally went to see Victor Frankenstein after we saw it in the Heart of the Sea. And it's not as bad as I thought it would be. It's still sort of eh. But I think there's some really good things about it. Alright, so Victor Frankenstein is a new take on the Frankenstein story. This time, however, we see it through the eyes of Igor, played by Daniel Radcliffe. In this version, Igor is a circus clown, but he's really brilliant and he knows his stuff. He's like the circus doctor as well when he's not doing these clown duties. And he is a hunchback and people consider him a freak and yada yada yada. But Victor Frankenstein shows up, played by James McAvoy, and he sees the brilliance in Igor after this stunt woman has this tragic event, and Igor resets her collarbone. So he steals Igor away, and together they try to create life, and try to create the Frankenstein monster. Now I do have to say, I did enjoy Victor Frankenstein a little. There is definitely some big flaws that I have with the movie. But I do feel that there are some things that are legitimately great. Daniel Radcliffe and James McAvoy were brilliant together. Daniel Radcliffe was probably the better of the two. He was definitely the more human, the more relatable. He definitely felt like someone you could sympathize for. James McAvoy, on the other hand, played the very crazy, mad scientist. But he played him really well. And I have to say, without spoiling anything, I think Victor Frankenstein's past and the reason why he wants to create life was a really nice idea and I really enjoyed that. That's probably one of the only things I liked about the third act of the movie, but I'll talk about that later. And I thought the whole circus scenes were really fun and they had its charm to them, but they were a little bit weird. The whole movie itself feels like it's trying to be a mix between Guy Ritchie's um, Sherlock Holmes movies with Van Helsing and The Mummy and it feels like a combination of those two things and it doesn't feel as good as any of those movies I just mentioned. Yeah, I kinda like Van Helsing. As I'm watching the movie I thought, okay, this is a pretty decent movie. There's nothing too horrible about it, nothing too great about it. It felt like a movie that could easily be anywhere between two and three stars from me. There's a few things here and there I didn't like about the first two acts. One of them being when it shows the title of the movie and the way it did it is just so corny, so cheesy and laughable. It's hard to take it seriously, but maybe it was meant to be that way, but it just feels really off and really bad. To tell you what I'm talking about, what happens is Igor sees Victor Frankenstein. They just help set this one girl's collarbone back and he, Igor goes, well, who are you? And Victor Frankenstein turns to him, turns to the camera, and then his, before he utters a word, suddenly, boom, Victor Frankenstein comes up on the title and it's really, really cheesy. And then it fades away and then he just walks away. So I guess he said his name when the title came on. I don't know. <laughs> and the, weird, the horrible thing is they do it again at the very end of the movie. They, they do it again. But yeah, there's some really smart things to it. It does feel a little bit more like Guy Ritchie's Sherlock Holmes, but not as great as that. They even show like the anatomy, the anatomy of people and their thought processes when they look at people and they just see the bones and the and everything. It's it's almost Sherlock Holmesy, you know. Speaking of Sherlock Holmesy, the uh, detective is very Sherlock Holmes like. He can just look at a crime scene, he's like, this, is ha this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened. And so he felt a little bit knockoff Sherlock Holmes in a way, but he's also very faith-based too, because he he's really into his religion. So much so that he thinks science is an abomination. Especially the, well, technically creating life is quite an abomination in this film. Especially the way they go about it, so I have to agree with the officer there. But by the end, he becomes just like, damn you, you're going to hell, sort of thing. And it's just like, oh my god. Like, really over the top. But I was going along with it. For, like, most of the movie, I felt, okay, this is still an okay movie. I'm not going to give it too bad of a score. But then the last act of the film happened. 
everything involving the castle and creating Frankenstein, almost every part of that was just so... I don't know, it's hard to say it was bad, it was just sort of... Eh. Like, there wasn't anything particular horrible about it, but there wasn't anything particular good about it either. Oh, and then the person, and the benefactor, the person that actually funds them. Oh. <laughs> I didn't like his character at all, and I guess you're not meant to like him, but it was just so over the top and so... He's like trying to be aristocratic, and it's just really painful to watch. I thought Daniel Radcliffe and James McAvoy had a great chemistry together, and they both were really good actors in this movie. Well, they're very good actors anyway, but in this movie they were really good, and they were probably the thing that enhanced the movie a lot better than what it should have been. So yeah, I can definitely see people hating this movie. I can see people ultimately liking this film. For me, Victor Frankenstein is about two stars. Have you seen Victor Frankenstein? What did you think about it? Go ahead and comment. If not, what is your favorite remake on a very classic monster like Frankenstein or Werewolf or Vampire? What's your favorite remake? As always, this is Bruce Gifford and this was just my opinion.